I would like to uh, present uh, to you um, um, a formalized approach uh, to uh, establish the archaeological theoretical framework, the, the spatial archaeology, uh, which, uh, which enabled us to, to extract uh, new archaeological information from uh, um, ev evidence on uh, settlement data. So just a short line out, I will, I will first talk about the data and uh, the motivation uh, why, why we uh, started to do this uh, research. Uh, some, something on uh, what, spa what I understand or, or when I talk about spatial archaeology, what it is. Um, then uh, I talk about uh, space as a chronological marker, how we can use space to tell us something about the uh, time, um, about the modeling itself, the algorithmic uh, modeling, and then uh, um, a, a brief uh, look at the results and uh, the possible interpretation. So first, uh, our data, uh, I worked or we worked with uh, data mostly from uh, field walking, which uh, took place over a period of 20 years by the Archaeological Institute of the uh, Czech Academy of Science uh, and uh, covered more than uh, 1,000 square kilometers, uh, 8,294 hectare squares were uh, walked and produced uh, almost 50,000 pieces of uh, pottery. Um, this data was further filtered because we are only interested for now in the agricultural prehistory, so from the uh, linear pottery culture to the migration period. And uh, also, sometime at, at some point in the process, we added data from excavations to, to enrich I will ex explain why shortly. So uh, we were working with uh, 3,669 uh, hectare squares actually containing fines, not, uh, not counting the ones uh, with negative uh, fines. So uh, to give you like an idea about that, this is just part, part of the data set, uh, the largest one. Uh, on the left, you see uh, data from, uh, from field walking. Uh, you see it's, uh, it's quite, quite densely covered, it's about 600 uh, square kilometers and uh, this was then further enriched with excavation data uh, because the excavation data provides us uh, with more, more precise uh, dating. So this is a zoomed in view and you can see that, uh, that the triangles, they are, those are data from, from excavations. Uh, they're not many, and or they're, they're scattered because, of course, the, the nature of, of uh, <coughs> the excavations, so how, how they take place, uh, and then then we have data from the surface survey, and you see only only some of the points are more more precisely dated. So mostly it's uh, this is, this is a, a fine slice from the uh, early Bronze Age. Most of the data is just uh, dated like uh, prehistory, so it's, it's uh, non-diagnostic uh, pottery. But, but we have good spatial coverage. And we were wondering, since uh, the people at the Institute were doing uh, so much work to, to collect all those data, if we can do something uh, meaningful. And what we wanted to, to see was uh, where the actual settlements were. And that's, that's where, uh, or the, the settlement cores, uh, that's where spatial archaeology comes into play. So, OK, we wanted to reconstruct uh, the prehistoric uh, settlement landscape, or how, where the sites were. Um, the theory of uh, community areas formulated by uh, Evgen Neustupny uh, says that uh, human occupation of the landscape is structured into settlement areas which, uh, which uh, are uh, to a degree predictable. So we have a, a habitation area, so where the houses are surrounded by areas of different uh, activities uh, out of which for us mostly the, the agricultural activities are interested. Uh, Dagmar Dressler uh, further elaborated on that and based on uh, different sources of evidence, archaeological and uh, ethnographical, uh, specified uh, limits for, for this uh, um, agricultural or production area around the, the settlement, how, how large it should be. And uh, that's, that's our uh, starting point. So we know that some of those, uh, those areas just covered in archaeological field, 
that they most prob probably are not just one settlement, which, which was very, very large. We, we know that there's the cores somewhere, there's the production areas somewhere there, and that, that they somehow developed in time, that it, it didn't just happen in, in one, uh, one point in prehistory. So we, we use this, uh, this model, this al algorithmic model, which I will uh, show you sh shortly, uh, to, to assign the observed evidence uh, of uh, residential activities, which is the, the, the shirts you, you find in the field, uh, to, to habitation areas, and uh, then uh, uh, model the production areas around them, uh, and uh, to model it so, to, to assign them to, to the phases so that, that those uh, uh, settlement cores uh, do not overlap, so because they, 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 would, uh, they need to respect each other. So, and then on this, such a, such a, such the model created in this way, we analyzed using uh, auris, auristic uh, analysis uh, approach, uh, which uh, involves uh, uh, creating a sufficient amount of statistically relevant sample of possible uh, scenarios, and we, which you can then uh, express in a, in a probabilistic way. Um, so uh, an example. So let's say we have uh, some settlement evidence uh, uh, distributed in a hectare squares. And uh, let's say we, we found some, some, uh, some uh, evidence of settlement. And the dating suggests that it's, it's just one phase. Let's say it's, it's early Bronze Age. But uh, uh, we, we can, what we can do is model the production areas adult, around those habitation areas. So we do that. And we see that the production areas overlap, so it's an indication that they cannot be uh, contemporary, according to our uh, theory. So uh, that's a, that's a chronological uh, marker. So we can we can construct possible scenarios where those ar areas don't do not over overlap. So there's one scenario, another one, another one. So that that would mean it's uh, it actually there had to be at least three settlement phases, but uh, we can further reduce this result because it, we we, need, we are looking for the most <coughs> most simple explanation. So uh, we can just reduce it to those two scenarios which which sufficiently describe our observation in light of the theory, and uh, we see that there were minimal a minimum of uh, two settlement phases. So uh, using this approach, uh, and uh, thanks to the Meta Centrum, which is a, a grid computing center, uh, which is available for free to all the academic institutions in the uh, Czech Republic, um, we are able to uh, calculate this model for the whole uh, area and uh, uh, to create sufficient number of solutions uh, of, of this, this phasing. You can see the, the different solution for, for just one phase cycling. So, of course, we do not know the sequence in which those phases uh, were happening, but we know the number of the phases, and we can explore this uh, solution space in a probabilistic way. So here, here you see uh, the expression of, of these many, many uh, so scenarios in, in one uh, probabilistic uh, uh, distribution map. So uh, one, one thing uh, we, tried, we, we were able to extract from the result is uh, the, the stability. So, so, so it's suddenly we saw in the, in the data, in, the, in those uh, large areas, we saw something like a course where the settlement uh, would, would uh, always return. So it's, uh, we were able to calculate a habitation uh, stability uh, index based on the ratio of observation uh, of uh, settlement in, in a square and how, how uh, likely it would appear in the next or the, the previous phase. And we see that started, uh, starting with the early Bronze Age, the, there was an increased stability of settlement patterns. So we have something like, uh, like central uh, sites in the landscape, which, which uh, over, over prevailed for, for hundreds, of, hundreds of years. And that's, that's something that, that we suspected before, but it was never formally uh, tested or, or expressed in a, in a formal way or, or data uh, supported. Um, here you can see the, the, this is the original data 
so scattered, scattered evidence, and here, here is, uh, you can see those, those hotspots of, uh, of uh, uh, settlement activity in the, in the landscape. The, the second result, or, or another, another of, uh, of results we were able to, to achieve was uh, to finally observe the, the spatial patterns. So how, how, how did the settlement behave? How did it develop over time? And uh, we used a, a pair cor correlation uh, function, which is a function to, to express uh, spatial clustering of data to, to analyze the, the, the different uh, solutions and to quantify degree of spatial organization. So we, we can uh, tell whether the settlement cl clusters at different uh, uh, radii or, or, or size, uh, size levels. And we see a higher order uh, social organiza organization appearing in, in the early Bronze Age. And there, there seems to be a, a fluctuation of this. So, so there's, there's a peak of, uh, of uh, how the, how the Settlement was organized into groups on, on different levels uh, in uh, in like uh, I think I think it's uh, Latin or, or uh, like uh, early Iron Age or late Iron Age, but this this organization declines actually. So even though we we, st we have uh, uh, <coughs> this, is, this is the the amount amount of settlements we see over time, and you see the amount fluctuates. But also, also the, the the degree of organization. So here we see it's the it's the, the, the uh, um, pair correlation uh, coefficient uh, shown for for uh, linear pottery culture. It's it's within the, the random random uh, limits. And here in the Hallstatt age, in the, in the early Iron Age, we see peaks of uh, clustering around one kilometer, three kilometers, so, so they, they were they were forming uh, hmm, structures at, at uh, different uh, like micro-regional, sub-regional levels. Uh, and that's an, that's an inter- uh, but, but we then we see a, again a decline in the Roman period. So it is actually as if the society was in, in one aspect uh, regressing. Um, uh, that's a, that's an uh, at least in my opinion an interesting find that we were able to achieve uh, using algorithm modeling. So I, I would say it's, it's a useful tool, and uh, now we have we have the, the computational capacities at, at our disposal to to apply it, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we will be able to work uh, more with it in, in the future. Uh, we are able to to achieve a more detailed phase phasing uh, of the of the data which we had available even though of course we were we do not know the order of the phases but if, if we use the proper probabilistic uh, techniques we can we can uh, analyze analyze this data on a, on a more more detailed level and in the future we plan to to enhance our model uh, by uh, uh, ec maybe economical or even ecological aspects. Uh, there can be uh, environmental models included. Um, probably we should we should discriminate between different or, or uh, between different uh, uh, technological abilities of, of the population in, in different times. So, so people use different uh, strategies in the linear pottery culture, Neolithic than, than in the Bronze Age or the, the Roman era. And also, also we had to kind of uh, close one eye when, or, or assume that all, all of the evidence we gathered was uh, settlement evidence, b even though we know that there must have been some burial grounds uh, in the data. Um, but okay, we assume that on a large enough scale, a, a cemetery indicates that there must have been a settlement some, somewhere in, in the vicinity. But uh, I think it, it could be uh, it could be approached, and that we could we, we could uh, work this into our model. So that's it and uh, thank you for uh,